This video provides information about how plants respond to pathogens and herbivores. As primary producers at the bottom of most food webs, plants are subject to attack by different herbivores, viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens like fungi. The responses shown by plants upon being attacked are driven by natural selection. The first line of defense of plants is the epidermis and periderm, two physical barriers to prevent other organisms from causing damage. However, these layers of protection can be penetrated, sometimes even through natural openings such as the stomata. Once the physical barriers are penetrated, the responses are triggered by the plant's immune system. Plants can either respond through PAMP triggered immunity or through effector triggered immunity, both of which are the specific responses from pathogen attack. Once a pathogen manages to invade a plant, PAMP, or PAMP, triggered immunity, may initiate. PAMP stands for Pathogen Associated Molecular Patterns. PAMPs are specific molecular patterns that belong to certain pathogens and plants must recognize these markers in order to trigger a response. PAMPs trigger a signal transduction pathway that ends up in an immune response. Often, the response associated to PAMP triggered immunity corresponds to the production of phytoalexins, which are chemicals with antimicrobial properties. In other words, the response is a chemical attack in order to prevent the spread of the pathogen. Following the production of phytoalexins, the cell wall also becomes more rigid, hindering further progress of the pathogen. The second type of immune response is the effector-triggered immunity. This type of immunity actually evolved from PAMP-triggered immunity as pathogens encounter ways to overcome PAMP responses by delivering effectors. Effectors are pathogen-encoded proteins that cripple the plant's innate immune system once they're delivered into cells. Because there are thousands of effectors, this plant defense is typically made of hundreds of disease-resistant genes, or R genes. Each R gene goes for an R protein that is activated by a specific effector. Once R proteins are activated, signal transduction pathways trigger a local defense called the hypersensitive response and a general defense called the systemic acquired resistance. The hypersensitive response corresponds to a local cell and tissue death at or near the infection site. In other words, the plant chooses to damage the site of the infection as a way to prevent spread to non-infected sites. On the other hand, systemic acquired resistance is a non-specific response that triggers a plant-wide expression of defense genes. This is the result of a localized hypersensitive response. Let's see how this works. Pathogens infecting plants will secrete effectors which will bypass PAMP-triggered immunity. In response to these effectors, plants will produce antimicrobial molecules, modify their cell walls, and destroy the infected sites by the formation of lesions. The dead tissue will deprive the pathogen from nutrients and help in stopping the spread of the pathogen. However, before the cells at the infected site die, they release methyl salicylic acid to the rest of the plant. Methyl salicylic acid is then converted into salicylic acid and induced a systemic acquired resistance, which consists of biochemical changes that provide protection to the plant against pathogens for several days. Plants are at a constant risk of being eaten by different organisms known as herbivores. Herbivory often results in mechanical or physical damage, reducing plant growth because plants may allocate energy to defend against herbivores. Furthermore, the mechanical damage caused by herbivory opens portals for infection by different pathogens, like viruses and bacteria. In response to herbivory, plants can show physical and chemical defenses. These responses cover all levels of biological organization, from molecules to communities. Physical defenses include protective structures, such as thorns and trichomes, where chemical defenses include substances that are distasteful or toxic compounds. An example of a chemical defense is the well-studied interaction between plants and parasitoid wasps, in which herbivory causes the release of volatile chemicals to attract wasps, which lay parasitory eggs on the herbivore. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Images and diagrams are from Campbell's Biology 11th edition unless otherwise stated. 
Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all of the details you need to know about these services in our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For many information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.